Minister, last uh, last estimates on the 1st of September, I asked some questions of uh, Deputy Commissioner Hudson and Assistant Commissioner uh, Walton about the Fixated Persons Unit mm -hmm. and its deployment against Mr Christo Lanka, the producer of the Friendly Geordies uh, program. And I did ask for the, the charter or the standard operating procedures for the Fixated Persons Unit to be provided on notice. Mm -hmm. um, while we did get on notice a descriptor of how uh, the system works, we didn't get a copy of the standard operating procedures or the, the charter of the unit, mm -hmm. if I can put it that way. Mm -hmm. Was that an oversight or uh, are you not going to provide that to the committee? Uh, I'll take that question on notice and if we can, if we can, if it was an oversight, we'll certainly make sure that we get it to you. Thanks. And I understand that some things may be sensitive in terms of, you know, police operations, but yeah. uh, the DPP's prosecution guidelines are public documents and I would have thought that the... Well, I'm not responsible for the DPP, so... No, no, but I would have thought that some of these things would be public. Does the Commissioner have anything to add? Oh, look, Mr Sell, we, we package up and we send off to government, what gets provided is out of my hands. So, and I can't, I I'm not engaged in the process once I work out the door in terms of what is finally provided or not. No, but, so you didn't make any policy decision about not providing the committee? No, that, no but nor I have on any issue since no. I've been coming here. OK, thank you very much for that. So I'll, I'll look forward to that uh, on notice. Um, in relation to how the matter uh, involving Mr Lanker unfolded, I asked again some questions on notice. And on notice, uh, you've provided that on the 2nd of December, an investigation by the Fixated Persons Unit was established by a complaint. Yep. The complaint originally came from the Department of Premier and Cabinet. Is that correct? I'm not involved in any operational matters. OK, well, I'm happy to ask the yeah. Police Commissioner, I, Mr I, Walton. I would defer to Mr Walton. Just Mr Walton? Just me taking questions on notice. I that's think that'd okay. be good. Mr Walton, was it a complaint from the Department of Premier and Cabinet that initiated this matter? Yes, Mark, Mark Walton entering. Uh, yes, as outlined on the 2nd of December, that was the initial complaint that went to the Sydney City Police Area Command. Now, now, in the answer provided on notice, it then says the matter was referred um, to the Anti-Terrorism and Intelligence Group where it was assessed and allocated to the Fixated Persons Unit. Now, just to be clear, did the Fixated Persons Unit then carry out its own assessment? No, the Terrorism Investigation um, Unit carries out the assessment of the available information and subsequently allocates the matter for investigation to the unit <coughs> then conducts a normal investigation, gathers evidence, assesses that evidence and determines whether action is appropriate. Right. Well, in relation to that assessment or the operation carried out by the Fixated Persons Unit, uh, Deputy Commissioner Hudson said on the last occasion, page 26 of the transcript, and I quote, I do not think appropriate processes were followed in that assessment, unquote. He was there referring to the operation of the fixated persons unit itself. So in terms of the processes adopted by the unit, can you tell us what were the procedures that should have been followed and what in fact unfolded? So there's a, there's a timeline in relation to this matter to provide some clarity around that answer and informing uh, the committee in relation to this matter. So the initial investigation started on the 2nd of December. That um, material related to two people um, generally referred to as the friendly Geordies, either actor or, or, or uh, producer. So that assessment took place and was referred to the unit for investigation. Over the course of some six months, they provided that investigation. However, date you're referring to around Mr Lanker's matter. That was the reference for Mr Hudson indicating that procedures weren't followed. What occurred there is that the unit took that fresh information relative to Mr Lanker and without further assessment or external advice from the terrorism investigation unit. It's it any better, does it? <laughs> Which led to Mr. Lankin's arrest. It's unbelievable how deep it is. 
uh, the process issue there that Mr Hudson was referring to, that he, he suggests that there should have been a fresh assessment of that fresh information? Well, yeah, well, if you're going to, if the fixated persons unit is going to be deployed against a particular person, presumably the assessment has to be done in relation to any information relating to that person or that matter. And you're and, and you're saying that there was no no particular assessment conducted in relation to Mr. Lanker before what before his arrest. Is that correct? Uh, only in relation to that fresh information that occurred on the day when he was subsequently arrested. Okay, was there a warrant for Mr. Lanker's arrest? No. So, under uh, pursuant to what power did the police make that arrest? Well, that's the individual power of the office of constable, and those officers make that decision themselves without any consultation or influence from management or any other party that I'm aware of. Okay, did they rely on Section 99 of LEPRA or did they rely on their common law powers? Do you know? I, I, I don't know when those matters are. I'm sure will be canvassed uh, in the upcoming court matter. OK. Um, in relation to an offshoot of this matter, there were efforts by the police to uh, engage in some suppression orders against the Friendly Geordies program. Do you you're across that? I'm aware of that. Um, uh, how did that particular application come about? Uh, it arose at one of the adjournment um, dates a couple of months ago. The material or activities of Mr Shanks on social media was raised with the police prosecutor and the prosecutor on assessment of that material raised concerns around contempt and question whether the material should be suppressed given the pending court matter that was done on the day by the prosecutor and the police involved in the court matter. OK, so to be very clear, this didn't also come from the fixated persons unit. This was the prosecution's unit on a frolic of its own, was it? Well, no, it's the prosecutor who led that evidence. who was acting on behalf of a mem member of members of the fixated persons mm -hmm. unit. OK. Um, without naming the individual, can you what, what sort of rank should these people be at? in order to take these actions? Well, the, the Office of Constable allows any person to be an informant um, in accordance with the law. Um, in this instance, there was a detective senior constable and a detective sergeant right. that are involved in this matter. OK. Now, you're aware in this matter there are some sensitivities. There is, you know, there's been a number of public comments around you know, the possible perception that the police are being deployed against a, a political critic of the government. You understand, you understand those sensitivities? Yes, and, I do. And um, is there any foundation to those concerns, in your view? I think we, as police, always need to be concerned about our accountability of our actions and certainly understand sensitivities, particularly those that are being uh, promoted by Mr Shanks and his uh, supporters. OK, so the Fixated Persons Unit, I think we invest, We tried to drill into this last time. Um, there's no suggestion that Mr Lanker presented any kind of physical threat to Mr Barillaro, is there? Mr Hudson made that very clear last time. Not physical, but um, there's also mental harm that uh, is the potential in relation to that referral and the matters that are before the court. OK, and did the Fixated Persons Unit proceed on the basis of any expert psychological or psychiatric evidence on this matter? No. OK, so just the police made their own independent assessment of matters? Yes. So you're aware in the application for the suppression that there was, you know, amongst the foundations for the application, was the fact that Mr Shanks was running a negative agenda against the Deputy Premier. That was one of the bases for the suppression order. And uh, 
uh, issues of derogatory comments in relation to Mr Barillaro's political position. These are the matters that, amongst the matters that the police relied upon. Yeah, I think that, that and also the potential impact on witnesses who are expected to give evidence in this matter. Um, but the application hit the wall pretty hard, didn't it? Uh, it was dismissed. <coughs> Did the police get external or, or independent counsel's advice before proceeding with this application? No, however, subsequent to the matter being part uh, of we caused independent background solicitor's advice in relation to the matter, and that advice suggested that the matter should be withdrawn, which we did on the first occasion. Okay, so... In, on reflection, that maybe that advice should have been reached for ahead of making the application. Would you agree with that? Uh, I think there's always a lot of uh, value in hindsight with you, but um, cautioning slowly in matters of this nature, I agree, it is an appropriate course. I mean, just to cut to the chase, there was a, a pretty dramatic arrest of a, a producer of a satirical political program which had come to sort of public attention through its trenchant criticisms of the government and Mr Barillaro, you'd want to make sure that any uh, police proceedings against journalists of this kind really stood up to that, scrutiny, that, wouldn't that, you? That might be overstating uh, his position. <laughs> Certainly not understating it. Mr, Mr. Walton? <laughs> Sorry, could you repeat that question? Please? And public comment. OK, well, I'll, I'll, I'll put it to you directly. Given that... Mr Lanker and, and, and Mr, Mr Shanks were very high profile public critics of the government through their medium on YouTube. You would want to make sure that any criminal proceeding against them actually stacked up properly, wouldn't you? That would certainly be my preference. Uh, uh, that did not occur. It did not occur. Um, and of course, the police have now been ordered to pay $22,000 in legal costs to both Mr Lanker. And Mr Shanks, is that correct? I think that might be the, uh, the gross amount for both uh, their legal returns. So on the last estimates, Deputy Commissioner Hudson also stated that an associate of Mr Lanker's was under investigation at the same time as Mr Lanker was under investigation. Should we ensure that that's Mr Shanks? Yes. Does he remain under investigation by the New South Wales Police Force? Uh, that matter has yet to be determined, so we don't know about active investigation, but we are waiting on advice in relation to sufficiency concerning material that's been gathered. What crimes do you think he might have committed? Well, they are matters of... Uh, the, the boy, lawyers will, will provide some advice on that. It the would be in the realm of... Uh, Intimidation. Thought crimes. It's not a crime to criticise the Deputy Premier, I hope, is it? I'd be in jail. <laughs> Sorry, Mr Walters. Mr, Mr. Walters. <laughs> I'd be the first one locked up. <laughs> so, um, so, what, so, what, so what is the crime that Mr Lanker's supposed to have committed? What are the charges against him presently? Uh, intimidation. In, Mr Lanker's supposed to have intimidated Mr John Barillaro. Yes. Have you met Mr Lanker? No. OK. It but seems, to be, a, it seems to me to be a fairly far-fetched proposition that Mr Lanker, who's a 21-year-old young man, would... Uh, uh, who's 65 be a, be a, kilos ringing wet compared I to the... I acknowledge dad, that. Really. Would be uh, found in any way to have intimidated Mr Barillaro, a man of, shall we say, robust and firm opinions... Um, and what evidence? Kilos. What evidence do you have about that intimidation? Is it just the videos that are in the public domain? Yeah, you know, the intimidation elements move beyond the physical capability. They move into mental harm, and I think, as I see so much material online, use of social media, um, there is certainly a potential for people be they high office holders or school children to be 
mentally harmed and cause anguish in relation to the actions of others. I understand that, but there would have to there would have to be a much higher threshold for public figures to be able to avail themselves of that claim, wouldn't they? Well, I think that's a pretty that's sad, big, sad proposition, sir. Yeah. Issue that would be court. Okay, well, okay. Leaving leaving aside the particular matter, obviously there's a, and you've already given evidence that the police proceeded without psychological or psychiatric evidence, so they've just made a a lay person's assessment, and I'm not being critical, but I'm saying that's what it is. Uh, presumably, if we're going to draw the line between robust criticism, or whether it's of a government minister or any other public figure, uh, and where that criticism actually becomes criminal in nature in the form of intimidation, presumably, like the DPP has a prosecution policy, the police would have to have a robust internal policy about where that line is and the circumstances in which the police would be activated against a citizen, particularly a citizen journalist like Mr Lanker and Mr Shanks. I think there's definitely a brave new world in this, Mr Searle, and I think... In, in the Aldous Huxley sense. You are all going to have to struggle with this more than I will moving into retirement because the, the sort of stuff that Mr Walton talks about online and kids committing suicide, adult, adults committing suicide because of online bullying and harassment, is, is that Parliament is going to have to, have to get the, the grasp on what setting, what standard do you want us to enforce more than how we're dealing with it, sir, out of respect. I mean, this is what new, right? This is a new want. phenomenon. <laughs> and, 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 you know, have we dealt with this matter appropriately? Well, hindsight, we could have done things differently, no doubt, and, and we're learning from it. But this will be one of the great legislative challenges of, of, of this decade. Well, Commissioner, this is in fact my question. You've, you, without that legislative apparatus, the police here have had to... Well, they've made a, a, a decision. They've made they formed a judgment. Uh, and they formed a judgment about where robust public criticism of a government minister has crossed the line. You know, a matter, it's a matter for the court, but that's the judgment the police have made. Upon what basis and on what policy has the police filled in those gaps. Yeah, and, and I think Mr Walton has explained that without having the brief in front of us, but sure. the matter's still before the court. I understand that. And and what happens is either we will lose and, and I'll have a black eye and then I'll come to government and say, you either need to change the legislation if you want us to protect our kids online, if you want us to protect even our leaders online. Or maybe you don't prosecute journalists. Or, 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 or no, well, what happens if Mr Barilara, who went off on psychological leave, are you saying that he wasn't unwell? No, I'm not, we're not talking about that matter. I'm talking about the fact that the police took this step without the psychological evidence. For example, right. if, if Mr we, Hudson... If now, Mr Hudson said there was meant to be a psychological assessment mm -hmm. as part of the fixated persons unit's own internal deliberations. That was said to be the, the, the procedure. That's right. Now, that, that didn't happen here. There was a procedure. At, whether on the first occasion or on the new evidence. Yeah. And I see Mr Walton nodding. So that's a pretty obvious breakdown in the police's own existing procedure. How did that happen? But again, that doesn't mean the matter will fail at court. No, but how did it happen that but, the but, police but did I, not I would get never... Site? You can never have a policy that says in these matters going forward... Before you determine psychological harm to a victim, you've got to get an independent report. It's ridiculous because that is a personal position on what causes someone stress and anxiety and causes them to go off and have sick leave. Like, I, I just think... I had understood that was part of the well, process of... It is that we would never go... And, and when there's been psychological harm in investigation, we would never go and get an expert report that on that. And him. that would be tested by the magistrate or the judge matters. when they interview the victim. Sorry. Commissioner, are you saying that if an element of the offence is psychological harm was caused, which seems to be what you're suggesting here in this, that you would never get expert evidence? We're discussing this issue that about any time a matter goes before the court and there's an aspect of someone being psychologically harmed, that we have historically ever gotten a specialist report. Well, we haven't. Well, you know, Mr Walton, is, is it, do you have any expert evidence or any evidence to link what... Mr Lanker has done with any psychological harm of the Deputy Premier? I'm not aware of any at the moment, but I don't have the brief in front of me <coughs> as to what has been gathered in relation to the harm to Mr Barilaro. Um, I, I might just try and clarify your point there around Mr Hudson's evidence previously. It said there are a number of people involved at different stages depending on the nature of the job. 
including the fixated persons panel, which includes a, a psychological, who can make referrals. So there, there is not a requirement in these matters that come to us. But on every instance, that panel fits and a psych, psychologist or psychologist is involved in that assessment. Hmm. Mr Walton, who in the Department of Premier and Cabinet referred Mr Lanka to the police? Mr Brady, I believe, was the facilitator. He, he made the referral to Sydney City. I'm not sure how much detail he had provided. He may well have just been a conduit from Mr Barilaro's office into the local police. All right. Well, if you have any detail, if you can provide that detail on notice, Mr Walden, that would be appreciated. Thank you, yes. Uh, just to close the loop on the line of questions I was engaged in previously, uh, Minister, when did you become aware of the Fixated Persons Unit uh, matter against Mr Lanker? Well, Mr Searle, I've learned more about that matter here in the last hour than I knew before I got here, but um, I... <coughs> it, it is... I don't want to trivialise it, but it's not something that the police would no, necessarily no, brief no. me about. I mean, there's 17,000 police officers out notice. there. And, no, it, you can take it as a given that I probably found out the same time you did. OK. Uh, Commissioner, where did you become, were you briefed by the unit before they took that no, action? No, no. Look, I was given a high-level briefing, verbal briefing, in the last few weeks. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know who friendly Geordie were. I, I, I think it's an age thing, Commissioner. <laughs> no, so, so, again, not making light of it, and I appreciate why we're debating it today. Yes. Please don't think I'm making light of it. No. But, again, in my life of COVID and other things, it, it hasn't been something I've been discussing regularly. But I would have something where someone's walked in and said, look, I need to brief you on a matter. So I can take that on notice. That's OK. If you could, that'd be great. Now, before I went to parts of the application, you know, with the, to do with the suppression order, and, you know, a lot of those matters did sort of sound very, if I could use the term, political. What are you doing as Commissioner and Minister? What are you doing to make sure that the police don't lose their sort of apolitical status here? Well, um, I'm a, a passionate advocate for the apolitical approach of policing in New South Wales, and um, I don't want to necessarily, you know, uh, breach confidences, but I have private conversations with members of your own party to make sure that they know that even when Parliament wasn't sitting, we had... Um, there was still some... Uh, open and and, uh, and transparent approach to, to law enforcement, but um, I got to say, I wouldn't. I, 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 there's no way in the world that I could look at any of the senior executive in the police force and say that they have ever acted in a partisan manner, whatsoever. In fact, um, quite the contrary. And I, I, as somebody who married into the police force, somebody who's well, my late father-in-law was a senior officer, and, and I still don't know how he voted. And I, and I think that's the professional oh, I approach. I didn't mean in a party political sense. I was really talking about. You know, that application to suppress that evidence. No, 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 but there was a there was a suggestion before that in some way the the, the police have acted in a in a partisan way because um, uh, the gentleman in question was a critic of the government. Yes. I mean if I was if I if I was to use my power to, to you know to track down every critic of David Elliott, well then there'd be nobody in this room. So but I, can I say and I'm conflicted on, on the answer to the question in a sense because you. I didn't know about it. No, that's okay. That's <laughs> but good. you know so you know, should I have known about it? Like, I mean, I guess that's the question. But if mm. you think there was influence from me, then there wasn't. Like, I'm I actually not, didn't know about it. I'm not it. making any allegations. No, I'm no, just asking I, the question. I understand what you're saying, but isn't it better that he had the ability to go direct to a constable or is it not? I mean, I guess they're the things that Mr Walton and I and Hudson need to debate yeah. around what is, you know... Because in, in that matter, it seems that the police applicant, if I can use that term, was concerned about, you know, the fact that the, the, the respondent was a critic of the government, was engaged in, you know, various political activities, criticising the politics, but and then at the very end says that, you know, Mr Shanks is not a, a critic or a journalist, and this is not for, you know... So it seems to be a very potentially dangerous spectrum for the police well, I to think, be getting into an evaluation about yeah, whether I, someone's you, engaging listen, in entertainment. You, you may well be right, and that's probably a philosophical debate that we should we should have, but I think you've also got to, um, I think, reflect on the Commissioner's point, and that is if people feel threatened and intimidated, if not really necessarily the tone. I mean, I've, I've you know, I'll, I'll, I'll look at my Facebook account this afternoon and there'll be plenty of critics yep. of me, and that's fine. Um, but if there's... 
somebody who physically threatens, say, um, the leader of the opposition or the minister for agriculture or whatever, will then just using to be clear, that there's medium... no suggestion of any physical threats in the matters that we've been discussing today. No, no. Well, I'm again. I'm not. You'll, you've got a better brief on it than me. I, I'm not. I'm not familiar with it. Yep. Minister, let's move on to a happier topic, perhaps, or a different topic at least. Happy, the, the, the 